Hi, biceps brachii. Um, kind of a popular muscle, right? Biceps, um, biceps, two heads, brachii, this is the brachium, this is the antebrachium, that is, this is the upper limb, this is what we might call the arm, brachium, antebrachium, forearm, so base biceps brachii. Biceps, it's got two heads, so it's got two tendons running up here, and one tendon, mm, one and a bit tendons, maybe another two tendons running down here. Um, which is kind of interesting anatomy, and also tendons can get damaged through overuse, inflammation, um, pathology, ruptures, that sort of thing, right? So I thought we'd look at the anatomy. We'll do a warm up, a little warm up of biceps brachii itself, what it does, where it is, and then we'd focus on the tendons. Where do they run? What are they attached to? Um, and then a bit of clinical stuff. What happens if they get injured? All right. Okay, right arm model, right arm. Um, so here's biceps, uh, and biceps is a fusiform muscle. As I said, it has two heads, and it's in the anterior brachium. It doesn't actually attach to the humerus. It has two heads that pass across the glenohumeral joint, the shoulder joint, and they both attached to the scapula, the bone up here, and then those tendons run across this joint, the muscle is here, and there is another tendon and a, um, another tendony type structure which we'll talk to in a moment, which cross the elbow joint and insert into the radius, this bone here, that's the bone that spins, and also into some of the fascia here. So the biceps brachii doesn't attach to the humerus, but it crosses these two joints. In fact, there's another joint here where the radius moves about the ulna. So really, it can't, you could say it crosses three joints if you wanted to be fancy. This means that the biceps brachii muscle can act across both joints. Its, it's most famous job is in elbow flexion or flexion of the humero ulna joint. So contraction of biceps causes this. At this end, um, because it's attached to the radius, it can also, so it goes, um, if you're pronated, biceps brachii, if the elbow is flexed, is a powerful supinator. So what's happening there is, is biceps is pulling the radius about the ulna. So the radius goes from this position where it passes over the ulna and the hand is pronated. Biceps can then pull the radius back around the ulna into this position, which is supinated. So that's important. Biceps is a powerful flexor of the elbow. Um, it's a powerful supinator of the radius at the powerful separator of the forearm. So then at the shoulder joint, it can also flex the humerus at the glenohumeral joint. And we'll see that the two tendons here have slightly different jobs, but it's also important in holding the glenohumeral joint together. So stabilizing this ball and socket joint, this glenohumeral joint here, and the, the long head can help with abduction of the humerus, and the short head can help with adduction. There are other muscles in the brachium, the anterior brachium, that also cross the elbow joint, also cross the glenohumeral joint, and are between biceps brachii and the humerus. See these guys in here, right? So it's not the biceps alone that is doing those movements. Other muscles are also supportive of that. The nerve that innervates these muscles of the anterior brachium is the musculocutaneous nerve. Tendons, hmm. Okay, so here, those two heads of biceps brachii have fused into a single muscle belly, but we can see one tendon running up here. The other tendon we can't see so well. I'm gonna take off 
the deltoid muscle. That is the, the muscle here, the rounding of the shoulder. And now we can see the short head here and you can just about see the long head is on this side. So the long head is lateral. The L's might help you remember. And the long head has to run a longer distance, which is why it's the long head. And it's out here. Um, so the short head, so these are the, these are the origins of the biceps brachii muscle. And the short head is attached to the coracoid process of the scapula, which is this lump here the coracoid process of the scapula and the long head runs up here and it runs it runs through this groove so on the humerus here in the proximal humerus we have two tubercles there's a greater tubercle and a lesser tubercle and in between the two tubercles there is an intertubercular sulcus or maybe an intertubercular groove if you prefer or because a tendon of biceps brachii is passing within this groove, you might want to call it the bicipital groove. So the long head passes through this groove and it's going to run over the glenohumeral joint and insert a, and attach to the supraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. It is tightly integrated with the synovial joint here such that it is surrounded by um, synovial membrane and synovial capsular tissues. There is a transverse humeral ligament tying down this tendon. So that ligament crosses from tubercle to tubercle, tying down the ligament within the groove, kind of turning the groove into a canal. So this is a, just the shoulder region. We've got scapula, and the rotator cuff muscles, we've got the clavicle, we've got a bit of humerus in here. So this is, this is biceps, there's the short head of biceps there, attaching to the coracoid process of the scapula. There is the long head of biceps. See the root it has to take, see why it's so much longer? And that goes deep in there to get to the supraglenoid tubercle. Here, this is a left shoulder, uh, we have scapula, clavicle, humerus. We haven't got much biceps on here, but there is the long head of the biceps tendon. Uh, here is the glenohumeral joint and its synovial capsule. See all the connective tissue here, the green are bursi. So you can see how closely associated the long head of biceps tendon is with the synovial capsule structures of the glenohumeral joint and it's disappearing in there. So where is the supraglenoid tubercle? Well, here's the scapula, there's the coracoid process there, here's the humerus. So this, this bit in here, is the shallow socket of the glenohumeral joint. So that's the glenoid fossa. So the supraglenoid tubercle, what we would do is we'd find the glenoid fossa, find the slightly lumpy bit of bone at the superior edge of the glenoid fossa. That is your supraglenoid tubercle. It's only little. And remember in here, it's a tight space surrounded by bone. We have supraspinatus running through here. There's not a lot of room. Supraglenoid tubercle. So the short head here then is medial and runs from the coracoid process, um, the tip of the coracoid process, a little lateral to the coracobrachialis muscle here. But the short head runs from the coracoid process of the scapula down here and those two heads then form and fuse into a single belly and then the tendon continues down here. Now dissecting this region on a cadaver is a little difficult because you kind of have to make some decisions. Now what we can see here is we can see the distal biceps tendon which is going to, this is a right arm, so it's going to attach to the radial tuberosity here. So um, whenever we have a bone, whenever we have a lumpy bit on the bone, 
that lumpy bit is caused by something attaching to it or an articulation, you know. So this lumpy bit of the, the radius here is the radial tuberosity. So that bit's simple. Big fusiform muscle, its fibres come together as a tendon. The tendon then inserts into the radial tuberosity. But in reality, when we're dissecting the forearm here, the muscles of the forearm are covered by a tough fascia, a connected tissue sheet, which wraps the parts of the body together, gives us shape, gives us structure, holds everything together, right? And the biceps tendon, well, when I, if I flex my biceps tendon and I try to palpate it, well, what I'm, what I'm feeling there is actually, it's, it's a sheet. And this is an aponeurosis, a flat tendinous structure. So a muscle becoming a flat tendon is an aponeurosis. We see an aponeurosis in the hand, for example, under here. And this aponeurosis means that biceps brachii can actually attach to the antibrachial fascia, the fascia of the forearm. So instead of a large muscle having a rather small attachment site to the radius, it can actually attach to the whole forearm because that's what we're moving. We're flexing essentially the forearm at the elbow joint. We see this elsewhere around the body. Gluteus maximus, for example, most of its fibers don't attach directly to bone. They attach to other connective tissue structures, which is perfect. But it means that when I'm dissecting, what I want to do is I'm taking the skin off. I want to show biceps brachii. I want to show its tendon, but it's all covered in fascia. So I have to make a decision about how do I cut this? What do I cut away? What do I remain? to demonstrate how biceps blends with the fascia. Because if I leave the fascia intact, you can't see any of the muscles deep to it. Do you see what I mean? This is why it's awkward to dissect. But in terms of, in terms of us, in terms of us who have still got our skin on, this means that an injury at this end might be um, the distal biceps tendon, which is attaches to the radius. And it's that tendon then, which is going to be responsible for supination so my radius is spun around my ulna, biceps will pull the radius back around again. By the way, do this on yourself. Feel your biceps, ten, biceps muscle, pronate and supinate with your elbow in the same level of flexion, and you will feel your biceps muscle moving because it's, it's pulling the radius around. So um, when you're, you know, Screwing, some, screwing a screw in, that movement, that supination is biceps. We'll come to why that's important in a moment. Um, so distal biceps has a distal tendon that inserts into the radial tuberosity, but also has a bicipital aponeurosis that inserts into the antibrachial fascia, the forearm fascia. A couple of other cool points is that um, that bicipital aponeurosis actually covers over the brachial artery and the median nerve. So it has a protective function as well in the cubital fossa here. Um, there's also a bursa around much of the distal biceps tendon that inserts into the radial tuberosity which helps everything move freely. A bursa is a synovial structure, right? Helps things move smoothly against each other as these tendons move around, because there's quite a lot in this small space. Those are the tendons of biceps brachii. All right then, what about uh, clinical stuff? Injury, well, the biceps brachii muscle itself could be injured, could be torn, um, but the tendons in particular are interesting. Um, damage to the muscle or the tendons is most likely could occur through sudden really highly forceful loading of a flexed elbow. So force in this direction because eccentric loading of a muscle, that is, is contracting and lengthening is when a muscle is most likely to be damaged, but also um, a heavy load 
a very high force load to a flexed elbow could also damage the weak points, which could be the tendons, could be the tendon attachments. Um, so uh, essentially trauma, uh, highly forceful loading, but tendons also suffer from tendinosis. So repetitive movements, re you know, repetitive movements of these tendons of the muscle can lead to tendinosis, which is uh, microscopic tears to the tendon, changes then to the microscopic structure of the tendon, so it weakens over time, which can cause um, localized pain in that tendon and further damage. Uh, that is, um, that's a, a tendinopathy that doesn't have inflammation, but tendinitis is when the tendon gets inflamed. So an inflamed long head or short head biceps tendon would be tendinitis. That can lead to changes in the tendon and lead to a tendinopathy. In all of those cases, the tendon becomes weakened and more likely to tear, be damaged, rupture. Because the rotator cuff muscles, as we've seen, are so tightly associated with the long head of biceps, inflammation of um, the rotator cuff muscles can also cause inflammation of the tendon of the long head of biceps. Supraspinatus up here, if there is a supraspinatus pathology, if supraspinatus is weak, impinged, inflamed, one of the things that happens is that on abduction of the humerus at the glenohumeral joint, the, hum the head of the humerus rises up, it slips up. And if that happens, then the long head of the biceps tendon is also likely to be affected by, by that. Um, in all of these cases, it's the long head of biceps tendon that is most far more likely to become injured, cause pain, be damaged over time than the short head. So repetitive use leading to tendinosis or inflammation leading to tendinitis and tendinopathy all lead to changes within the microscopic structure of the tendon causing it to be weaker. So then a heavy load of high force on that tendon means it's much more likely to tear than, it, than a healthy tendon would. Uh, which also means that um, injury to the long head of biceps tendon is actually more likely in older people because these changes are more likely to occur as you get older. Um, so what would happen? Well, there would be localized pain. So if the short head is here and the long head here, the pain is likely to be localized a little bit more laterally. There may well be lo localized bleeding, um, but the short head is still intact. So it can actually compensate for much of the movements lost through the long head of biceps tendon because the short head is still crossing this joint, is still intact, and is still to an extent holding the biceps muscle in position. However, there's a Popeye deformity, right? So the biceps muscle, if the long head of, if the tendon of the long head tears, then the biceps muscle might get shorter, which means the muscle gets shorter and fatter. It sticks up higher. So you remember, I don't know if you remember Popeye, the cartoon character, ate lots of spinach, got these massive biceps, huge forearms. Probably would have been a good climber, but he was a sailor. Um, so the Popeye deformity, tendon up here tears, muscle shortens, fattens. If you compare the two different sides, that side will look quite different to the other side. What about the distal end then? So we have the distal biceps tendon inserting into the radius here, and then we have that bicipital aponeurosis. If the bicipital aponeurosis is torn, again, the, tendon, the biceps muscle is likely to shorten up into the brachium, up into the arm. Um, if the distal biceps tendon that's attaching to the radius is torn, then supination is gonna become weaker and more difficult. There are other muscles of supination. Biceps is one of them. You take biceps away, supination will still be possible, but it will be weaker. Um, and again, localized pain, swelling, and what have you, that sort of thing. But still, the 
a tear of the long head of biceps tendon is far more likely than a tear of the distal biceps tendon or the bicipital aponeurosis. But yes, all these things can occur. Treatment, it's not my job, I just teach anatomy, but in many cases, surgery is not required. Oh, the other thing that can happen, of course, is that the, the tendon can actually avulse from the bone. It can come away from the bone. Um, and it, it depends on what has happened, what the severity is, um, how much function is lost, how much cosmetic change there is, and how much what that person is concerned about that cosmetic change as to whether a surgical repair of whatever has happened is necessary. Um, but hey, consult your surgeon. They will understand your individual case. Okay, that was my aim because I think this is quite a cool topic. Uh, biceps is quite a trendy muscle, biceps brachii. We uh, warmed ourselves up with its general anatomy and then we talked about the short head of biceps running to the coracoid process of the scapula, the long head of biceps running through this uh, intertubercular groove to the supraglenoid tubercle uh, and how the biceps muscle is actually kind of floating on other muscles anterior to the humerus and then we have a distal biceps tendon that inserts into the radial tuberosity so it can supinate the radius and flex the elbow and we also have a bicipital aponeurosis which pulls on the fascia of the forearm to transfer that movement to the fascia. All right, um, so now you know a bit more detail about biceps. I hope that was useful. Um, I just quite like talking about this sort of stuff, as you might have gathered. I'll see you next week.